Hey there. Recently, there have been quite a few questions in the SAP community on how to initially load your data into your CAP application. So there were questions around localized data around nested entities. Let's just tackle that really quickly because it's not as difficult as it might look. So let's switch into Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, we'll simply start a really new project. So let's open the terminal. Let's use CDS init to initialize a new project. All right, done. Now, um, first thing, we need to define a schema. So let's open our DB. Let's create a new file, schema.cds. And in that schema, now for the sake of an example, We'll use some localized strings. We'll use a nested entity, and basically that's it. So let's start with a namespace, a namespace in this case, deconsolvis.cooking. Now, um, after that namespace, we'll create an entity. That entity will simply call it recipes. Um, we won't use CUID um, because I want a simple ID um, just for the sake of testing. In a real example, for sure, use. Um, use CC UID. So we'll just have a key ID, which is an integer. We'll have a name, which is a localized string. And we'll have uh, ingredients, oops, not integer, sorry. Ingredients, which is a composition of many. And in this case of many, um, which is attributed with the key ingredient association to ingredients, which is an entity that we'll still need to create. And we'll just uh, attribute it with amount, which is an integer. Okay, integer. And now we are still missing one entity and that entity is the ingredients. In this case, we want as well, um, the key being an ID, yep. <laughs> key ID uh, being an integer, and we want name of string. And let's um, yeah, let's implement the backward navigation as well to the recipe. So let's use recipes association to many recipes dot ingredients on dollar self. All right. Now we've got our schema. Next up, let's create a simple service to test our schema. So let's create a new test service.cds. This test service.cds will uh, just use our namespace. We're not using this one, but we're using dot dot db schema cds and we'll use de dot cooking as cooking. Okay. Now, next up, let's just use our service, call it test service, and let's simply use the entity's recipe as a projection on our defined re uh, recipe, which is cooking.recipes. And let's do the very same with entity um, ingredients as projection on cooking dot ingredients. Now we're missing two things up here, which is um, the uh, on and with the, oops, sorry about that. I jumped somewhere else. Um, with the service up here, we don't need anything, but we want to name it recipes as well, because the usual thing is calling your entities with the plural. All right, now we have our um, schema, we've got our service, but we've got no data. For the data, we're using a folder. In this case, there are multiple ways, but we are using a folder called data in the DB folder. And in here, we're going to create CSV files, so comma separated values. Um, if you remember, um, our um, entities were called recipes and ingredients. The name schema here is first the namespace, so deconsolvis.cooking, and then the entity, which is in this case recipes.csv. Okay, we've got our ID and we've got a name, and we'll just call it one and 
Let's call it salty sugar. All right. Now, next up, we're creating a second um, file, which is de.consolvis.cooking minus ingredients.csv. And once again, we've got ID and name. Let's use ID one for uh, sugar. Oh, how do we call it? Salty sugar? Salty sugar, yeah. Let's remove the space up here. Um, let's just use ID one for salt and let's use ID two for sugar. Okay, so we've got our two entities. So far, so easy. Next up, let's uh, localize our recipe. So let's um, give it a translation. For that, we need to create a new file called deconservice.cooking minus recipes and now it's underscore text.csv. So underscore text is for the localized data. Now we're using ID, locale, and the string or the entity that we want to translate. So in this case, name. It's one, DE for German, and um, Salziger, Zucker in this case. Okay, so we've got our translations. Next up, we're still missing our uh, nested parts. So how do we define the um, ingredients that are contained in a recipe? That's quite easy as well, but it's um, yeah, it's not that obvious. It's deconsolvis.cooking dot recipes minus now in this case ingredients.csv. Now in here we've got an app ID, which is the link to the uh, recipe it's contained in. We've got the ingredient ID, which is the association to the ingredient. And we've got the amount, which is basically the attribute that we added in this mapping table. And it's really easy for us because it's just one, one, one. And let's use one, two, one. So we are mapping um, the recipe salty sugar to salt and sugar. And each of them are just one, whatever. Okay. And with that, we're basically done. We can load our data. So let's open up the terminal, just clear that out. And let's use CDS Watch to start the server. I think the port is already in use, so we're just getting a random one. So we are now on port um, 5437. Let's use a REST client. And let's use HTTP slash slash localhost 4537. OK. Now slash test for our service. And let's close that one to make a little bit more space. And um, let's start with the recipes. Okay, so what do we expect? We expect back a list of all recipes. All right, we've just got one. So let's use um, simply uh, question mark dollar expand equals ingredients to get back the mapping table as well. Okay. So now we have the mapping table. We see that our mapping table is loaded as well. But we're not just interested in the ID, but also in what the hell is this ID. So let's use in brackets, dollar expand um, equals, now I think it's ingredient. And we should get back the ingredient name as well, or rather the ingredient. Okay. Currently, um, the only thing that should be localized is the salty sugar. So the name of our recipe. How would we do that? Now, yeah, need to scroll. Um, we can add a little um, information mark back here, which is SAP minus language equals DE in this case. We can send that one and we're getting back Salziger Zucker. So in a really simple way, you just created an entity or you created a service with two entities. Um, these entities have a composition of many. So one recipe can contain many ingredients. If the recipe is deleted, this kind of association or composition is getting lost as well. You can navigate back from your ingredient to the recipes it's contained in, and you can localize your data or translate your data, which is basically everything you'll probably need to do to get started besides then really implementing your service. So initially loading data and eventually also using that for tests is really simple. Just remember that for the localization, use an underscore with texts, so namespace, 
minus entity underscore texts. For the nested data, use namespace dot entity minus the name of the um, nested, let's call it entity. And basically that's it. All right. And with that, let me switch back to my screen. Let's hide that one. It was really fun to just show you um, this little example. And I hope you learned something and it helped you. All right. See you. Bye.